Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. So we have the Astros uh, in Canada taking on uh, the Blue Jays today. 5.35, the broadcast time, first pitch after 6. Yesterday was the first day of July. We discussed this yesterday a little bit, but during the Astro broadcast, they they discussed this as well of Canada Day. And one of the guys said, and I did not know this, which kind of shocked me and it shocked his partner too. I can't remember which one of the guys said this, <clears throat> but said that Canada wasn't patriated from the United, the Parliament of the United Kingdom until 1982. Prior to 1982, it was known as Dominion Day. And then after that, now it's since known as Canada Day. Did you, did you know that? I didn't know any of that. Yeah, I thought I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was fascinating. <laughs> it's a federal statutory holiday, which makes sense. It celebrates the Canadian Confederation, which occurred on July 1st, 1867. That's when the three separate colonies of the United Canada's, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, were united into a single dominion with the British Empire called Canada. And they finally got away from the Brits in 1982. I mean, we got away from the Brits in 1776. They got away from them in 1982. 106 when, years later. No, 206 years later. Chuck, when the United States uh, basically said, uh, bite me to, yeah. in 1776, yeah. specifically in the Declaration bite of Independence. Me. That's what they said, bite me. John Hancock, bite, bite me. me. Yeah. Um, his name. Take this and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, we no country in the history of the world at that point had broken away from its parent company. Country? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that had never happened before. Right. We were the first. Okay, I know. Just, which is like that's when the whole revolutionaries yeah, started I got with it, regards just, to breaking away. It just surprised me that it was 1982. They weren't as upset as we were. <laughs> I guess not. They're, they're pretty. I guess get along kind of group, right? I guess. Yeah, get along. What music are we hearing? <laughs> oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Okay. That's not okay. loud enough in my headset to be able to understand it. Yeah. Yeah, I like just the first to four words are oh Canada. Yeah, I just need to turn to have my head set yeah, up. Yeah, six thirty four this morning here on the morning drive. Anyway, so I just wanted to give you a little conversation starter if you needed one. <laughs> you know, for this afternoon, if you're any of your get-togethers or things that you're you know standing around the water cooler, did you know? Kind of deal. Did you know? All right, if you I, need a conversation starter, mm-hmm. don't talk. Oh, don't talk. Oh, no, those are... If it's not just, like, casual and normal, Uh don't force conversation. Well, I mean, there's... That's... Chuck has his advice. That's mine. (laughs) If you need to pull out something you heard eight hours earlier just to start a conversation, you probably don't need to converse with that person. Maybe maybe to sustain a conversation or to show that you've got some... Why do you need to sustain it? If it's dead, it's dead. Yeah. If you have nothing pertinent to say... Why just keep talking? <laughs> Unless you're being paid to do it. That's right. different. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I mean, you know, it's this will come as no shock to you. And probably Jeff would probably uh, second this motion. Talking has really never been a problem for me. It's it's never been a problem for me either. It's stopping. It's stopping talking. <laughs> it's the problem for me. You've you've seemed you've mastered that. All right. I am highly suspicious of this story. I think there's more. I think there's more to this story than we have learned so far. Okay, it involves New York Mets outfielder Brandon Nimmo, N I M M O. I'd never heard of him until this story came out. He missed Monday night's game, a nine to seven win over the Washington Nationals. Apparently, Mr. Nimmo fainted in his hotel room overnight and hit his head when he fell. He um, did not have a concussion. He went through all the tests. 
his uh, his his skipper, Carlos Mendoza, said he went through all the tests, wanted to make sure we weren't missing anything. Luckily, everything came back negative, so I think we got lucky there. Apparently, he woke up, not feeling well, around 5.15, went to the bathroom, cramped up, and fainted. When he came to and got up from the floor, this is according to ESPN, he was bleeding from the head and wasn't sure why. He called the Mets trainers who went to his room to assist him. Went to the hospital, CT scan, had a bandage on his forehead, hoping to, hoping to be back in the lineup soon. Mendoza said he's got a pretty big cut. He's been with the Mets for nine seasons, 31 years old. Had just hit his 100th career home run in the Mets' uh, loss to the Astros 10-5 to to Houston in 11 innings. I just feel like there's something else here. <laughs> um, Do you think there's not a cut on his head? No, I think there's a cut on his head. You think the trainer didn't find him in the bathroom? You know, he I don't know where the... He got up. He fainted, okay, hit his head, and then called the trainer. I just think there's something think, else here. You think here. the trainer's covering something up? I just don't think we have the whole story. He don't. doesn't have the whole story. He doesn't know how he hit his head. Mm. I I don't know about that. Maybe somebody got angry with him and hit him, hit him with a with a bottle or something like that. <clears throat> just think there's. So now we've added a whole other person in the room that we haven't discussed yet. Right. There's there's more to this story. Were they dropped off by aliens? Mm-mm. Are you sure? Uh. Uh-uh. 31-year-old ball players who are in peak condition don't just faint. He's not in peak condition. He fainted in his head on the sink. Are you I'm with? not going to try to claim that uh, I've um that I'm a 31-year-old that I'm in peak condition or that I'm a ball player. I'm not com- I am not saying I am any of those. Mm-hmm. But there are times where I've gotten out of bed uh in the middle of the night to go use the restroom or whatever and right. just been a little bit like Woozy. dizzy, like yeah. it takes me five seconds to kind of okay. of walking to kind of really figure out where I'm at and all that good stuff. Okay, just mark this time, six thirty nine, July the second, twenty twenty four. I'm skeptical. Chuck apparently has never gotten up too quick and gotten lightheaded before. No, I I have. I just, just he's skeptical. Like it's fine. Just I'm just being a little, you know. I'm who cares a call. <laughs> who cares a call? <laughs> He's an outfielder for the Mets. Who cares a call? Who cares a call? <laughs> Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. You could write that. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time for the stay in sports history. Today is July the 2nd, 2024. Here is Jeff McGuire. I'm kind of sad I missed yesterday because I didn't get to do all the monthly stuff. I know. I thought about that yesterday when you weren't here. It's like, yeah. is Clinton going to do the? Kind of I I, I don't know what Clint. I I did give him the the Texas Tech note, and that there weren't any Texas Tech birthdays yesterday, but I don't know if he did the the monthly deal or not. He he didn't. Well, I have to wait until next year now for July first. Oh, well, because we can't do it today because it's the second. <laughs> uh, Nineteen eleven, Detroit Tiger legend Ty Cobb hits his. Gets a hit in his 40th straight game in a 14 to 6 route of Cleveland. Mm. His streak would end tomorrow. 1930 history for tomorrow. I doubt I'll mention it again tomorrow since we mm-hmm. talked about it today. Uh, 1933 New York Giants pitcher Carl Hubbell works 18 innings of shutout ball without issuing a walk. To beat the St. Louis Cardinals one to nothing. Nice. Carl Hubble. He was uh he could throw some darts. For eighteen innings of no walk ball. Yeah, right. Jamie just found his new favorite pitcher. I know. I, I wonder what the strike I guess we had a big strike innings. zone that that day, right? Umpire couldn't see over his protective shield or something. Well things like that have changed now and there's I mean, there's a reason for it, right? When we have so many cameras and we're judging umpires on, you know, being in that particular mm-hmm. strike zone, there's no such thing as, 
anymore of guys having bigger zones or smaller yeah, right. zones, you know, mm-hmm. maybe smaller, but you can't have a bigger zone. You're going to get graded and they're going to grade you poorly. And so I think strike zones and, and so a lot of people complain, well, strike zones are so much smaller now. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to hit the spot. You know, it's a small zone. Well, that's what the zone is. That's what you guys are asking for mm-hmm. with, with the cameras and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to lead to that. So uh, with that, you would expect walks would go up a little bit. You be careful what you ask for, right? Mm-hmm. You just might get it. 1941, Joe DiMaggio hits a three-run homer off of Boston's Dick Newsom to pass Willie Keeler's Major League Baseball record of a 44-game hitting streak. Mm. 1961, amidst five New York Yankee homers versus Washington, Roger Maris hits number 29 and number 30 for the year. He'd have a few more. Mm-hmm. 1986, Boston Red Sox pitcher Roger Clements suffers his first loss. This one 4-2 to Toronto. One win short of the American League record for consecutive wins to start the season. 2006, former Red Raider Josh Bard goes 3-4 for four with a double and an RBI in a Padres 6-2 loss to the Giants. I think we could have gotten Josh some help there. I mean, he did all, almost everything you could ask him to do. A lot of nights he did that. Yeah, very, very true. 2008, and a settlement, a settlement is reached allowing former NBA franchise the Seattle Supersonics to move to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma with a new owner, a new owner and a, a new lease at uh, the Key Arena uh, for two years, bringing the Oklahoma City Thunder to existence. Uh, it is National Anisette Day. It's a Mediterranean liqueur. It's in the, the Sambuca family, if you're interested. I could have sat here all day and not come up with Sambuca? that. Sambuca? Sambuca. Any relation to Sam Bowie? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sambuca. It's in, that, it's in that family. It's in that, yeah, it's in that. If you are... It's a... I don't want to say licorice because I think I'm more of licorice like um, Jaeger, <clears throat> but it's in, it's in that it's a, a clear liqueur uh, in the in that kind of flavor profile. Full name Samuel Buka? <laughs> nope. Flavor Sam profile. <laughs> Happy birthday, Margot Robbie turns 34. Lindsay Lohan 38. Alex Morgan 35. Larry David 77. Derek White 30. Jose Canseco, he may be crazy, but he was right, is 60. Mm. And Richard Petty turns 87 today. And on this day, I mean, if Chuck really wanted to talk about conspiracy theories, this is the day he could do it. 1937, the Lockheed aircraft carrying American aviator Amelia Earhart and navigator Fred Norman is reportedly miss, is reported missing near uh, Howland Island in the Pacific. The pair were attempting to fly across the world when they lost their bearings during the most challenging leg of the journey. They were uh, looking for an island 2,227 nautical miles away, almost in the center of the Pacific Ocean. They have yet to be found. And that is this day in sports history. Although there's plenty of grainy pictures out there of, you know, planes and Amelia Earhart and, you know, the Japanese and... All and none kind of, of it has been confirmed. None of that has been confirmed. And they, All of it is pukamalation. <laughs> they thought they found her plane, but it's like in 600 feet of ocean, so they're not going to be able to get to that. So, 600 All, feet in the middle of the Pacific? That's a pretty shallow section of the Pacific yeah. Ocean. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I was just coming up with a number. I would, you know, Mr. 1% over there being able to... Uh, you talk. could double your 600, and I still don't think you're halfway to the bottom of the ocean. In the Pacific, okay. Uh, the ocean's pretty deep. Ten thousand feet, Jamie, is what they is what they where they found that plane. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, not not so good news um, for Jamarcus Russell. Remember him? He was the uh, former number one pick that was basically a bust. Um, he wasn't basically a bust. He was a bust. So he has been fired from his volunteer assistant coaching position at Williamson High School in Mobile, Alabama. That's where he went to school. 
He's also facing a lawsuit that says he took a check that was meant for a donation and cashed it. $74,000. $74,000, right. Uh, This was to apparently help the Williamson football team purchase weight room equipment. The school allegedly never received the check. Russell reportedly deposited it in a credit union and promptly withdrew 55000 of it. Mm-hmm. Got to be smarter than that. No, you don't if you're Jamarcus Russell. Yeah. <laughs> he was not uh, not a very smart guy and uh, has a, had, a, had at one point in time a pile of money. My guess is, is that pile of money has probably disappeared. Yeah, sounds that way. Yeah, so that's uh, that's bad bad news bears for him. Um, did you have any opinion of um, Clay Thompson going to the Dallas Mavericks? Was that a surprise to you? Yeah, definitely a surprise. I expected him to resign with the Warriors. I expected him to kind of go to the Lakers because Le- I thought LeBron wanted him. But yeah, I mean, certainly going back to the Warriors, but you know, maybe staying in California. Um, but uh, he'll now go to the Mavericks. Can he help them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He can, absolutely gives them what was shooter. What was Ma- the Mavericks' biggest problem last year? They didn't have a guy on the wing who could shoot. Define Clay Thompson, guy on the wing who can shoot. So this uh, ESPN article says that his deal was largely inspired by his chance to compete for a fifth title with the Dallas Mavericks, who were the Western Conference champions. So, um, this requires a sign and trade. There's, you know, um, Josh Green's going to go to the Charlotte Hornets, and then two second round picks are going to go to the uh, Warriors. Dallas is sending its own 2031 pick in the deal as well as the least favorable of the 76ers or Nuggets second round pick in 2025. Usually, none of those things really mean anything. Those yeah. second round picks. Not, uh, not normally. They don't normally really mean anything. Um, but, it, the Lakers wanted him, but um, the financial savings from living in Texas over California and the fact that the Mavericks came within three wins of an NBA championship were big factors. Yeah, no state income tax here versus California. Yeah, that should be a big, big factor. No, mm-hmm. no doubt when when it comes to the finances, if it's if the money is the one of the most important things to you there. And I mean, because ob- obviously he's he's well taken care of over sure. his career. I think so, right? But I would think number one on his list was trying to compete for a title. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Nice to have you with us today here on the Morning Drive. A week from today, it's Big 12 Media Days in Las Vegas. The Red Raiders will be there. Jamie Lint will be there. Choice Woodman will be there. And uh, you guys will be uh, speaking to... uh, among those uh, in attendance, um, hopefully, the head coach, Joey McGuire. Um, he'll be glad to see you, I think. I think Joey McGuire is uh, pretty happy to see anyone. He, he pretty much is. Yeah, yeah he pretty much is. Uh, uh, which is, which is, I think, a, I think it's a great trait to have. Um, and I think it's... Um, it's not uh, disingenuous uh, by him at all. I think he too, truly, genuinely is excited to see uh, the sacker at the grocery store um, to the president of the university and uh, treats him all the same. Um, senior running back Taj Brooks will be there. Junior quarterback Baron Morton will be there. Bryce Ramirez will be there, the linebacker. Another linebacker, Jacob Rodriguez. And senior offensive lineman Caleb Rogers. Man, those are those are five guys, all in different positions for the most part, uh, that uh, you're really counting on this coming football season. Yep, absolutely. Um, some for the most part, guys that have done it before and shown you really good things, and um, guys that you're expecting them to do it again this year. Yeah. So Tech's appearance at Big Twelve Media Days will be on day one which is a week from today. Uh, it'll be at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Uh, you looking forward to seeing kind of what the inside of that place looks like? Sure, sure. I mean, yeah, I've never kind of been there before. so you're kind of yeah. a fan of that, you know? Yeah, but uh, it's just a completely different feel when you're, I mean, has tables set up all over sure. compared to a, a real game. Will you go get your picture taken in front of the... Um, Probably not. Y- 
you don't even know what I'm getting ready to say. I, I mean, I, there's nothing in. I mean, I, the Al Davis, you know, Eternal Flame. No. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if they'll light the flame in uh, honor of Big Twelve Media Days. They have somebody that kind of flicks the switch, you know, uh, each game. That's kind of a that's kind of a new thing with the Raiders. You get to light the flame, you know. Then it's not an eternal flame. Yeah, true. It's a yeah. memorial flame. It's a memorial flame, yeah. The eternal, eternal flames don't go out. Yeah, they don't go out, right. The JFK's doesn't go out. You can blow on it and blow on it and blow on it all you want, but it's not going to go out. I tell you what, if Tyree Wilson swings by, I'll get my picture taken in front of him. Okay, get, make sure you get in front of him because if you get behind him, we won't see you. We won't see He's you. a big guy. We'll see really beyond really that. Anybody. I don't imagine that there's much going on in Vegas. I'm going to get my picture taken in front. <laughs> we won't have to worry about you and a mugshot in Vegas, will we? I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't guess so, but I mean, unless somebody's, I might have an Ollie Gordon moment. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's got some problems uh, there. In uh... he doesn't have problems. He's not. Well, he gonna miss one series of their first non-conference game, right? Apparently he was uh, allegedly re- arrested for uh, DWI uh, either last night or early this morning. So that's a little bit of a problem for him. Um, okay, uh, so you'll have um, two days of uh, Big 12 media days. And really, I mean, you could say that there's it's always football season, right? You could say that. But it seems like each year the snowball starts really gathering momentum right after the 4th of July. Because right after the 4th of July is Big 12 media days. Then the next event is... Everybody reporting for fall, quote, fall practice, even though it's 100 degrees. And then getting ready for the first game, which will be, you know, coming up at the end of August when uh, Abilene Christian comes to town. Do they usually wait to August to report? Or um, is it like, still in July? It's like right around August 1st, August 2nd, you yeah. know. It's That's just, why I feel like, I think many people believe just like you're, excuse me, just like you're saying that once Big 12 Media Days hits, it's game on, but yeah. I mean, they don't start practicing again for two weeks or so after that to me until they start practicing. It's yeah. really, it's just talking season. Yeah. Talking season, right? And then the coaches get a little bit of a break and they're going to move into their new offices on like July the 19th. But I mean, players are in town, they're working out, getting, going to school. I mean, there's still summer school going on right now. I think. I don't know when summer two starts, but summer one has been going on. So a lot of these athletes, uh, regardless of you know sport, are in are in class right now. Uh, we get this uh, from the Yates Morning Center chat line. This is a nice note, considering we've had a couple of not so nice notes. Good morning, guys. A little late to the show this morning, but this loyal female listener and tech alumni gets ready for work every morning listening to you guys. Love this show and my Red Raiders. Well, thank awesome. you. Thanks. Thank you. That's very nice of you. I was looking at the list of guys that are <clears throat> going to uh, Big 12 Media Days, and I thought it was kind of that's kind of interesting that not everybody is taking their quarterback, which, you know, not everybody, I guess, is proud of their quarterback uh, or feels like their quarterback is going to be a, a difference maker. Um like Arizona's taking their quarterback, and I think they have great expectations for mm-hmm. Noah Fifita. Fifita? Fifita? I gotta have to get that. F I F I T A is how you say his name. Uh, Arizona State, not taking a quarterback. Baylor, not taking a quarterback. BYU, not taking a quarterback. UCF, they're taking their quarterback. KJ Jefferson, he's a really good one. Transfer from Arkansas, correct? S- yeah. Cincinnati, they're taking a punter. <laughs> That's cool. Mason Fletcher gets to go as their punter. Maybe he's maybe he's their version of what we've kind of had the last couple of years. Really good punter. So is Colorado. And so is Colorado taking a punter. But there's there's two Sanders going in addition to the head coach. You got Shiloh Sanders on the defensive side and Shadir Sanders on the um, offensive side, the quarterback. And then Daddy Sanders will be there too. I didn't even know Shiloh was a thing until a few weeks ago. <laughs> Maybe a month ago. Um, will you have any desire to talk to Dion at all? 
Uh, if we could get Dion for an interview, I would definitely do that. What's What's a question you would ask him? Man. Um, uh, what was the biggest uh, s- struggle slash difference transition from coaching at a lower level of college football to coaching at the Power 5 mm-hmm. slash Power 4 level? Big 12, okay. Yeah. Um, there's two former Texas Tech quarterbacks going. Uh, one will represent Houston, Donovan Smith. Okay. He'll be there. And then um, Alan Bowman will be there representing Oklahoma State. That's kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's odd. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, we're in the transfer portal era. Yeah. so yeah. Sure. Yeah. They also list Ollie Gordon as going. I wonder if that'll change. <laughs> I wonder so. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> might find somebody else. <laughs> might might need to take somebody else. He might have. He might be. He might be a late scratch. Um, both the Kansas schools are taking their uh, quarterbacks, Jalen Daniels and Avery Johnson. You know, for Daniels, uh, I think probably the big question is going to be similar to what your question is here: can Can he stay healthy? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Avery Johnson uh, is he more than a flash in the pan? Not that. He was a big flash, but, I mean, he certainly was here. TCU taking their quarterback. His name is Josh Hoover. Um, Utah is taking their quarterback, Cameron Rising. You, that makes sense. And then Garrett Green going for uh, West Virginia. So, I don't know. It's just kind of sometimes telling uh, who's got one and who doesn't or who feels like they've got one and who doesn't, you know, when, when Big 12 Media Days comes around. Yeah, a lot of times, they, I guess, schools that don't take one that, that says the job's up for – up for grabs and they still have a couple different guys fighting for it. Yeah. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. All right, guys. So I'm basically going to ask you to come up with a question here. Come up with a question. And you could ask any of the five Red Raiders of Big 12 Media mm. Days one question. Mm-hmm. Yes, any of the five, one question mm-hmm. that they had to answer honestly. Truth serum in their veins. Okay. That they had to answer. And the question cannot be. How's your shoulder? How is your shoulder or how is Baron's shoulder? Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> one question that they had to answer honestly. That's a great answer, Chuck. You're thinking, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Good work. Okay. That was the obvious mm-hmm. one. Captain Obvious here. But it, it, but it was good because we've swung and missed on Captain Obvious before. We have. And I yep. I certainly have. You try you overthink it sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's here's one for you. Um, so you got to tell me the player and mm-hmm. the question. Okay. Taj Brooks. Are you concerned about being overused um or were you overused last year, and how is your body feeling going into the season? Okay. Okay. Jacob, you got a question? Yeah, I think I'd ask uh, Joey uh, if he plans on integrating the pass game more, and if so, if it's, if we're going to see some running back screen game to try and get Taj Brooks going in a game that would be heavy pass. Okay, because they, they, this staff definitely doesn't throw the ball to the backs a lot. Yeah. All right, Jeff? Joey McGuire, is the offensive line really improved? <laughs> that kind of feels like a Baron Morton shoulder question, but that's that's. Fair. I was not told I couldn't ask no, about the offensive no, I line. I understand that. <laughs> I am following directions given. I, I had in my head one of them would like, to, would be to Caleb Rogers, is the offensive line better this year than last year? Mm-hmm. I, I had that one in my head. Uh, I'm going to go with, um, and I don't really, I feel like this is kind of not Jamie territory, but I'm going to ask it anyways. I would ask Taj how frustrating last year was, knowing that at times you felt like you could have helped more okay. and you weren't being used as much as, as maybe – you know, early on in the season, obviously, as the season went along, I don't mm-hmm. think anybody would would say that. But early on, yeah, early on to feel like, hey, I can help more, but I'm not getting the touches that I need. Mm-hmm. But um, 
and and that's kind of and I and I say it's 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 kind of behind you and it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but it would just be interesting to know at those t- at during those times last year was he really frustrated or did he kind of keep his his head about it and I don't know just kind of rolled with it but uh I think those are all good questions. I think those will all be questions that I would be interested in 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 hearing the answers to. I mean I think the offensive line one is legit. I think uh the passing using the running backs in the passing game more would would be fun to see. Mm-hmm. I I just I wonder though about it if it's going to happen because you've improved your wide receivers. It feels like a bunch, and so you're going to rely heavily on those you, you, those guys. You've got three or four good ones that you're really, really confident in, plus uh, the tight ends that you've brought in. Maybe the question should have been to to Barron, do you think the tight ends will be used more in the passing game? Mm-hmm. Because we have all felt like the last, especially last year, that you had two really good ones, but you didn't use them much, you know. And it could have been because you felt like you needed to keep him in the block, but I guess none of us had any questions for the for the linebackers. Well, and here's I was just going to throw this out uh, out to, to a Jacob Rodriguez question would be, um, what's what's your thought on the defense this year? After last year, we saw you know just such great play and improved play, but then you have the losses up front and the losses in the secondary, and, mm-hmm. and you know who's who needs to step up. Yeah. Yeah, and somebody says that on the chat line with all the key losses. How do you feel about the defense? Oh. Yeah. Uh, the other, you know, with going off the, you know, utilizing the running back in the passing game, you know, you're going to have a healthy Cameron Valdez this year from the hopefully from the very beginning. Um, and uh, I mean he's he's got a guy, he's a guy that's got some speed, so um, maybe he's maybe he's utilized a little bit out of the backfield a little bit to get the ball to. Yeah, if you were going to use the running back in the passing game, he might be the guy just because of his explosion, his mm-hmm. burst. At the same time, the things that Taj does well running over people and you know, getting through people, not not as if he can't do that when he catches a pass. So either one of them would be good. Again, I I just I look at your the options that you have with the wide receivers and tight ends and say that's probably you're probably thinking to yourself those are our best options in the past game, and that's part of the reason that you don't see the running backs used that much and, in the and passing game. Maybe for Bryce Ramirez, my my thought would be on him. That's it's his biggest contribution, the leadership that he can provide overall with the team. Because I would have to think that he's got a ton of equity that he's built with his teammates with the injury that he's come back from. I think your point that you're trying to get to is good, but I don't think that question is right. I don't think he's going to say that's his biggest contribution. Mm-hmm. I think he'd say his biggest contribution is going to tackling, tackling fools with the football. <laughs> fools with the football. No, no, you're right. But I mean, but he's also that guy that can, you know, maybe help, you know. Yeah, I think he's a great leader. There, yeah. Absolutely. He's probably one of the better leaders on your team. And mm-hmm. he's. You know, absolutely all. But he doesn't that. want I to just be seen as that. I, yes, I get you. he yeah. wants to be a. He's yeah, a, I'm a football player, right? I'm a player. I, I, I got gotcha. you. I'm going to go I hurt gotcha. people. Um, I, I don't. I, this one off the chat line is great. To ask any player if they hate the calls made purely on analytics as much as the fans do. I bet the offensive guys are like, "Yeah, Love let's it. go for it," yeah. and the defensive guys are thinking to themselves, "No, Jeez, we should." Louise, punch. man, you're going to put us in a bad spot again. Yeah. Yeah, I think it probably depends on which side of the ball that which side of the ball that you're on. Um, yeah, I've forgotten about all the analytics stuff. Now that just drives me crazy. Um, <laughs> man, I wish I had a direct line to Coach McGuire and just go, "You sure you want to do this?" Straw poll, pa- straw poll, fan poll right now. <laughs> There's a direct direct line to Coach McGuire during the game. Who is the last person you want on the other end? <laughs> the last person. <laughs> we'll take your votes now on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Who is the last person that you would want calling Coach McGuire in the middle of a game? Yeah, somebody. Probably- I have a vote. <laughs> 
The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie Lent, and Jacob and Jeff, I'm Chuck Hines. It's great to have you with us. We come to you from the first United Bank studio. Look forward to hearing from you on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Many of you have chimed in uh, already this morning. Uh, also, the Visual Edge IT hotline is open too at 806-771-0973. We'll have the Astros and the Blue Jays from Rogers Center uh, tonight at 535. Balls and strikes after six. Rangers and the Padres tonight. Interleague game between those two teams. 630 the broadcast time. 710 or so. First pitch from Arlington. Man, the the Rangers just they feel like they're going nowhere right now, Jamie. Yeah, obviously their health issues are are causing them problems. Mm -hmm. Um, At the same time, there are other areas that you wish that they were playing a little bit better. But they also, I remember, they just went to Baltimore, or they just played Baltimore, who is a really good baseball team. So don't get too down about that series. Um, Astros are surging. They are 9-1 and in their last 10. They've won three straight. They... uh, Trail the Seattle Mariners now by three games. Uh, Seattle is three and seven in their last ten, and uh, the Astro offense is starting to kick in a little bit. They're now plus thirty five in the run differential. Um, the only other team in the West that's positive in that category is Seattle. They're plus six. Uh, the Rangers are minus ten. The Angels are minus sixty four, and the A's are minus one hundred and eight. Um, but when you look at the East, you look at teams like New York and Baltimore. Baltimore's plus 112, the Yankees plus 102. And even in the Central, you have Cleveland at plus 98. So, I mean, obviously the name of the game is scoring more than your opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, and if the Astros kind of keep continue on this pace, not the 9-1 not the and one pace because that's not realistic, um, but continue on this pace of, you know, playing well at home and, and, uh, and and scoring, um, they're going to have a chance uh, to overtake the the Mariners there in the in the West and see what they can kind of make of that. Make it certainly it's certainly a race, no no question about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Rangers, it's <laughs> for as for as bad as they've played, um, they're they're only eight back. They're seven back in the in the loss column. So if they were to go on some nine and one run. Um, it's going to put them in a pretty good spot. Sure, sure, depending on what other teams do. Sure. Um, I would tell you right now, eight games feels like a big number for that team. Okay. Okay. Uh, and they're also eight back in the wild card. So, that I mean, this is uh, – and we've talked about this time and time again. Uh, the Astros are three back in the wild card. But for the most part, if you want to, if you want to advance into the playoffs out of the West, you're going to have to win the West. It feels that way, unless, you know, those teams from the East or Central come back to the pack a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, yesterday was July 1st, and, you know, frankly, it, this probably will shock you, but I didn't realize that, and I'm not making a big deal about Bobby Bonilla Day, but it was Bobby Bonilla Day in which he got paid a million dollars, but it's... It's actually like 1.3, I think. It, yeah, what, it's it's uh, 1. 1.193, 2, okay. 4.8, and 20 cents. Okay, so really like 1.2. Yeah, yeah, right, 1.2. And those payments continue for him until 2035. He's 61 now, but he'll be 72 when the payments end. But he's not. he is not the only one. And that's what kind of, you know, you always hear about Bobby Bonilla Day, okay? Um, but the other guys that, that are getting paid... Um, or have been paid on July first. Um, are, are have some you know you have some big names like Ken Griffey Jr. Since two thousand and nine, the Cincinnati Reds have paid him three point six million dollars. Since two thousand and nine, and he didn't really do a whole lot. Three point six every year. Three point six every year since two thousand and nine for Ken Griffey Jr. who who made his money and made his stardom with the Seattle Mariners. Mm -hmm. Now, this was his last payment in 2024. The Boston Red Sox have paid Manny Ramirez $2 million each year since 2011 and will do so through 2026. 
It's good. That helps him buy his steroids. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> the uh, Baltimore Orioles, starting last year. Isn't Manny still playing somewhere? I thought, yeah, like Germany or someplace. I was thinking a Mexican league, but okay. Yeah, whatever. I've never heard of the German. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew it was something exotic, you know. I could have said. Oh, Germany's exotic. I, said, I could have said Czechoslovakia, or, you know, or <laughs> Uruguay or, you know, Beirut or someplace like that. <laughs> um, Matt Holliday um, will be paid $1.5 million uh, by the Cardinals until 2029. The, and this one surprised me. The New York Mets have paid Brett Saberhagen $250,000 each year since 2004 and will continue to do so through 2028. Saberhagen came up in 1984. Um, you know, he won a Cy Young, won a World Series as a rookie, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there were probably some times when $250,000 is what he made in a year, especially in the early 80s or in the mid 80s. It's possible. You know, I mean, he, he as cashed, a rookie, I bet yeah, so. Yeah. Um, but he became a superstar pretty soon after that. Yeah, so he did. I bet you he was making more than that soon after. Um, but, you know, here's, here's the thing. Um, Max Scherzer, uh, he'll, he gets, he's owed uh, $15 million a year from 2022 to 2028 by the Washington Nationals. <laughs> it's good life, man. Man, it sure is. I mean, and he's owed, like, by the Rangers, and he's owed by, I think, somebody else, too. Mets, maybe? I think so. I think the Mets owe him some money too. So yeah. So I mean, it's just it's when you think of Bobby Bonilla Day. There's other guys. Those are other guys that that do that too. And um, I remember a guy. Don't that, you wish you could be so talented at something that people paid you to stop doing it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> go, right. Go away. We'll pay you. To well, just I go think away. I think some people would pay me to go away. I just don't think it's enough for me to live on. Okay. Okay. I think I think it's I think people would pay me to go away. I just don't think that me and the lucky lady. Have you ever lady, tried like a GoFundMe to see? No, see if, if you can make no, no, it no, work. No, no. <laughs> I don't want to give. I don't want to. I don't want to imply that that's a possibility. <laughs> you know, because it might not be. It might not be enough. So. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.